All right, so this one, tuple to union, implements a generic called tuple to union, go figure, which converts the values of a tuple to its values union. What does that mean? Um, well, take it here. So there's this type, which is an array containing the literal values one, two, three, which are all strings. And then we have a new type test. We pass it uh, our, the array that we just made with tuple to union. And what we, what we get back is a union of all of the values of that array. Okie dokie. Rob, what do you think? Any, any immediate thoughts on this one? This one looks a little crazy, but I'm sure there's a there's a little trick to it. There's a trick. There is a trick. A, so we need a tuple here. So let's extend. Um, you can yeah, you can just say like unknown. Oh, okay, that's an interesting way. Would that be equivalent to just saying unknown array? Uh, I think I think that's slightly distinct. Um, because you're saying it's a tuple with an unknown number of values versus an array. I guess technically that is the same thing. Um, so let's see. So we've got a, a T that is some kind of array here. And mm -hmm. then we can access the values in an object uh, by doing a property, right? Mm -hmm. So let's, let's just put in a number here. Oh, you got it. <laughs> so first try. Th this this one you've seen this before, haven't you? I mean, th this one is a pretty. I think you can. Let's just check to be sure. Yeah, it accepts that. I think there. I, I don't know if, if somebody read I think that. Tuples are a subset of arrays. So arrays. Okay. Yeah. Well, here we are. Uh, if somebody knows more about that, I would love to hear like the the lowdown. Um, but basically, this is a trick. This is saying, because if you put, a, if you think about it, like, if you just say key, let's say you, you said like key, key of T. Well, let's see, let's see what that equates to for a second, right? Um, type X equals this. And let's hover over here and we're going to see, wait, wait, wait. X is declared, but never used. Uh, key of, oh, it's just telling me key of these things. Um, well, anyway, let's put an empty array. Maybe that will help. Nope, it still doesn't tell us. Okay, but no. if we if we try to do here, we did like X. Um, is it going to tell us? So basically what it's going to do is it's not going to show us. Well, they're there. So what it's going to do is if we... Oh, you want me to bring it back? Yeah. Um, let's, let's try sorry. This. T. Key of T. Key of T, great. So what it's going to do is give us all of this other stuff that comes all with the race. 29 more. Values, yeah. Yeah, so it's absolutely loaded with all of the array prototype stuff, and we need to exclude those somehow from the list. So I'll uh, I'll I'll throw it back in front of us again. We're getting there. We're getting there. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I'm gonna show you some stuff. So I looked online for other examples. That's that one. But here's another uh, here's another example of a way to solve this. Uh, do you see the difference between these two? So tuple to union, the one we started with, will error if you pass it something that's not an array. Whereas right. this one will return never if, if it will evaluate to never if you pass it something that's not an array. They both pass these particular tests because we never pass something that isn't an array. But it is worth asking in your code base like which way you want to go. So usually I think it's better to put a constraint on the generic. Another one is this one. So this is what Rob yeah. was doing a second ago. And what they're doing is uh, an, like an exclusive join of these two types, number and key of T. And so we're kind of excluding the keys of T. Um, this is equivalent to just saying number. You know, if you find uh, code like this, uh, what is, what's going on here? Cannot be used. Oh, because it, we need to have a, right. So in this case, we would have to have, you know, now we have equivalent uh, solutions. Yeah, because I, I think T is... Yeah, you'd have to like constrain it to symbol string. Uh huh. Yep. So here's another one that uses extract. So this is using extract as a built-in in TypeScript, and there's another video on that um, in the in the challenges. But basically, extract is is doing the same exact thing. We're extracting from key of t. We're extracting only those that are assignable to number. Um. So 
similar but different. Usually, you know, people don't like to use, uh, you know, the built-ins in these examples, but I think it's okay from like a learning experience to see. This one is a super fancy one. I think it's a little overboard, but it's interesting. So we're saying, mm -hmm. we're asking, does T extend? And then we're inferring the values of R from an array. And if they're there, then we return them. Otherwise, not. The thing that's right. not so this great is, about... Hmm? This is what I was talking about, where the, the tuple is a subset of an array. Uh, so by okay. casting it to an array, you're implicitly getting the union of all the values. Uh, okay, cool, cool. That makes sense. So you were thinking of it with the infer thing. Okay. This is a similar one too, um, but it's more explicit perhaps. This is using this is using yeah. recursion, which is, it, it gets really sk uh, squirrely sometimes doing solutions like this uh, as far as performance goes for TypeScript to compile your code. But this does work. Um, T extends and then we're inferring a particular value and then grabbing the rest of them, head and tail. So for, if we have head, then we pass it uh, through, and if not, we take, or then otherwise we take tail and we recurse through, and eventually we return never. And if you do anything or never, it'll just be the same as anything. So head or never would be the same as head. So this is the base case of the recursion. Kind of funny. Um, another one that works is this one. I don't know why this works actually. Um, any thoughts, Rob? I kind of want to like validate it for myself that it works. Yeah, it works. Um, Interesting. So does that work if we pass it something like this? Yeah, there's no constraint on the generic, so it would. Oh, interesting. Um, well, what, what would the return value be here? We have to do that, too. Um, it would be like zero or length it, well i mean it wouldn't make sense because we're using array so no it wouldn't it wouldn't fail um yeah, what so is what is it what is it equal any <laughs> any <laughs> so it does work uh does pass the tests maybe work is a strong term for this and then the last one sim starts out similar to how we began t extends uh let's take uh let's take this one out of the running here um and then oh we don't we don't care about this so this one here, tuple to union now, we, we just renamed it. So we're seeing uh, T extends any array, key of T. Yeah, so all, all number keys. Right, exactly. So this is saying key of, and then we're mapping, and we're mapping through the keys that are, like we're making an object and then taking the, uh, the things out of the object. So I think this would even work if you did like... Yeah, true. actually, that's, this mm. would work with an object like array. Oh, so it's it's got this, but I think if we got this out of here. Ah, but number. then we can't access it with a number. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you'd have to do some uh, extends magic in there. Mm-hmm. Yep. But this was another example I found. I thought this was kind of interesting. Um yeah, and it does pass all the all the use cases. So kind of interesting, right? Very interesting. Cool.